Hey, my name is David Buck, and right now we're going to look at the new updates that Lightroom just released. So that's Adobe across Photoshop, Camera Raw, and Lightroom, and just given us in our uh, nice little update package. So if you're one who doesn't like to update, like I am, and my wife is always saying, hey, you should update. Yes, update, because you get these new features. Let's take a look at them. So there, this uh, pop-up screen comes up in your Lightroom, and there's a couple of really, really interesting ones in here that I want to take a look at. Number one is this denoise, so we'll take a look at that in depth. And the, the other one that I'm really, really excited about is this curves one right here, this masking update. So the ability to be able to ma use the masks, the, uh, the selective tools within Lightroom, and to be able to adjust the curves of the selection that you have picked. Huge, as far as I'm concerned, so let's check it out. There are a couple other ones we'll just touch on really quickly right now, and that's uh, the clothes and facial hair masks. So if, if you don't know already, Lightroom in the develop module under the selective tools will, if your picture has people in it, will detect the people right here. And if you click on the people, you can see all the different things that the, uh, the AI chooses for you that you can mask with just selecting those. So I can choose the face skin or the body skin or the eyebrows or the lips or the teeth. And what they've now added is an option for hair and for clothes. Now, this is this is big, this is awesome, this is huge, but it's equally as huge as all the other stuff they already have. So the ability to be able to take a math mask, I can create a mask just to the clothes and I can make adjustments to the clothes just like that. Okay, so just a couple clicks, I can choose what I want and make adjustments to it. But what's really, really interesting is that as I scroll down these options, I now have the ability to adjust the curves of this particular selection. But we're gonna dive into that in just a second. What I wanna look at first is this denoise feature. So automatically recover noisy images shot with high ISO settings without losing sharpness or details. Now, I've tried some other noise reduction softwares in the past and I've always used the Lightroom ones and they're good, they're great. And there are other programs that say, hey, we can do a better job. But for me, always having to take my image and move it into another program, do the adjustment, I just, in my workflow, I just never really did it. I, I, unless it was something that I could do on export and go to sleep and it would do it for me. Um, but it's, it was never really something that I wanted to use. So I want to take a look at this within Lightroom because if we can incorporate it into our workflow and make it actually adjust the images that we are doing on a daily basis, then that makes it really, really interesting. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna take, I, I just happened to be, when this uh, release came out, working on uh, a landscape image. Uh, that one right there went out early in the morning to get uh, the Vancouver skyline. And so I thought, well, hey, let's, uh, I, I had just processed it. <laughs> and then of course Lightroom comes out with this new feature. So I figured, well, let's do the same image that we just did. So here's, here's what it does. So a couple of notes to start with. You can, at this point, you can only use it on DNG raw, like the, the camera raw type images. You can't use it on JPEG or PNG. Adobe says that they are looking at ways to be able to apply it to other file formats. So that might be coming into the future, but for right now, it's, uh, it's raw or DNG camera raw or, or DNG images. And uh, just so you know that the process itself takes about 30 seconds to a minute and a half per image. I mean, I'm using large images, I know 24 and 48 megapixel, depending on which one camera is taken with. And, uh, but let's take a look at it. So here's, here's an image as, I don't know, is this as shot? Uh, no, it's not. So that's as shot. So I've made some adjustments to it already. Let's go right in here to 100% and take a look at what we have. <clears throat> So you can see this is taken at uh, 320 ISO. It's part of a multi-shot panorama. At 320, we don't expect a whole bunch of noise anyways, but hey, let's see what happens. So this is found under the detail where the noise was before, the noise adjustments was before. And you'll see this new option here under noise reduction called denoise. Reduce noise of AI, the result will be saved as a new DNG. So it'll be it'll save it as a new file. So let's go ahead and click that. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it takes just a little bit of time. Okay, so there is my image zoomed in at 100% without any noise reduction applied. And at 100% noise reduction, it makes a pretty gosh darn big difference. That is very cool. Now the automatic setting that it gives you, the, the, the default is at 50. Um, 
and after playing with this for a little while, you can see the difference here. Here's, here's uh, full noise reduction and there's none. You know, looking specifically in, in these colors here, in the gradients of the colors, this makes a huge, huge difference. And, you know, I mean, that, let's, we'll go, let's go to some buildings here. So that's with the noise reduction applied. That's no noise reduction with no, I mean, there is no sharpness being lost and the gradients that it's giving within the color, you can see the color noise there. You can see specifically in this spot right here, if I have no noise reduction applied, you can see the, um, the color noise that's happening there. Specifically, you can see these spots, these, these purple and green spots. And I apply the denoise and all of a sudden, magically, they are vanished and gone. That looks freaking awesome. So I'm very excited about that. That is, that is super cool. So here's, um, so I press the enhance button and it takes some time. <laughs> uh, this is my, you know, my computer's a little bit older. It's uh, 2019, but it was a maxed out MacBook Pro at the time. So it's a laptop. Yes, I understand. Uh, but it's, it's, it's running pretty quickly and this is going to take a good, a, a good 30 seconds to be able to process. So you want to use it mindfully knowing that the process is going to take a few minutes, especially if you're doing 5, 10, or 100 images. If you're doing it to a lot of images, you want to do it overnight and make that one of the last tasks that you do before you, you get up and go do something else that's not at your computer. Okay, so I have the finished file here. Let's, so I've got, I've got the panorama and I've stitched them together. And uh, I'm going to jump right ahead here because I went ahead and finished the photos. Okay, so when I look at them side by side, I don't obviously no notice any difference at this, but where it gets interesting is where you zoom in to 100%. So in the finished file, if I look in these colors, the right is the file that I had processed before the noise reduction feature was available, and this one here on the left is after the noise reduction feature was available. So this was processed um, with that. And I mean, as I look in closer and closer, like look at, look at in this area right here, how much noise there is from the orange into the blue and the pink. Always tough areas for the camera to figure out and to, to capture properly. And they are smoothed over and just incredible. So I would say that this particular feature right here is a huge win. So for those bigger landscape images that you're doing that you're gonna print up, I mean, this is, this is fantastic and it works right within Lightroom itself and yay, awesome. So then I pulled some RAWs that would be a little bit more difficult to deal with. So I went, I went, I went to a, a recent wedding and, uh, and, and sorted it by, by how much, <laughs> by how high the ISO was and I pulled out a couple of images. So this one here, so this one here is a nice moment and you know, you look in here at the face and you can certainly see the grain. So that shot at, uh, 8,000 ISO. Let's see what happens with the, with the denoise feature on this one. <laughs> wow. I mean, let's go to their original, their 50% mark, which, which, uh, which Adobe says is the sweet spot, but look at this area right here. I'll get all that color noise and then boom, it is gone. Just gone. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and zoom right in here to the face because that's the important part of this particular image. And with the more noise that you have, I mean, the more uh, limited you are in what you can do with the photo. Oh my goodness, that is just, look at that. That's before. That's after at 50%. That's at 100 Okay, 100 may be a bit too much there, but if we if we stay at 50, I mean, look at that before and after without and with. That is crazy. So enhance that, and we get this image here. As you can see, zoomed into the face there, that is a significant difference. So I went ahead and pulled this into black and white and played around with it a little bit and was able to pull out a really nice moment. I can crop in there. I don't have to worry about... <clears throat> uh, 
I can crop into this moment. I don't have to worry about the, the quality in there. And let's just pull that in just to bring attention to our subject just a little bit. And there we go. So definitely a winner. Definitely something that we can use daily. Okay, one other one here. Let's just see what this thing can do. Uh, I pulled this image out. This is <laughs> this is the highest one that I could find in uh, in short searching. This is shot uh, natural light off a bit of a like dim floodlight uh, at nighttime, and it's shot at twelve thousand eight hundred ISO at one point eight. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> so really what Adobe is saying is if you can shoot it, if you can capture it, we can make it better. So you'll see here, I mean, this, you got to remember this is 12,800 ISO. This is, this is way up there. You know, even if I drop down to the 50% mark, I get a little bit of that graining in the skin, but really it's getting rid of all that color noise. It's getting rid of all those changes in color with that when you start to push the image, uh, it doesn't work. So uh, here, let's, let's, Let's pull into this. Let's see what happens. This is a, a enhanced one. Now I went ahead and did that before, before I recorded this video. But if I bump up a bit of, oh, oh, look at this. So that's shot a little bit dark. Okay, it uh, it was shot low. It's recovered. Yes, I realize it's not perfectly tack sharp, but uh, this is a recovery image. And it's a darn good recovery image. And that right there, that is a perfectly deliverable photo from a, a brightness and a noise perspective. Look here in the dark areas. I mean, do you see any noise left? I, I don't. That's awesome. Just awesome. All right. <clears throat> so just a couple notes. You got to make sure that if you are using it in a panorama, it doesn't. Uh, allow you to do the noise reduction once the panorama is stitched together. So if you're going to do it on that, you got to do each individual image first and then stitch them together after that. And it only works on DNG or RAW, not on uh, on JPEGs. So they, Adobe said they're potentially working on that, but for the time being, just on the just on the RAWs. From a workflow per, from a workflow perspective, if you're going to do a bunch of images, select them all uh, and batch process them. So if I if I choose, so if I was to choose all of these. If I was to choose all these photos here, I can I can go down to denoise and I can say enhance all three images or all the images that I've selected. Okay, so you can batch them together. You don't have to wait for each individual one to be done. So you always always have to figure out whatever you're doing to your images, you gotta figure out how to do it in a way that's gonna work in your workflow so that you keep moving forward and get stuff out the door. Because if you're waiting for Lightroom to finish your file, then you're not working on other stuff that should be worked on. Um, okay, so let's go back to this this uh, curves masking feature. So this right here, um, this is a feature that I've wanted for quite some time and I'm so glad that it's finally here. This is an image that I shot, oh, six years ago and I'm happy with it. This was, this was pushed pretty far from what the original was. I, in, in my quick search, I didn't find the original raw photo, but this was the JPEG that I had that I had finished a, at a time before. So we've been given all these tools to be able to select any part of the image. And in that selection, we have, um, we've been given a whole bunch of tools. And the one that was kind of missing was the ability to adjust curves within there. So I'm gonna show you just, <laughs> so I pulled this image up and in about 30 seconds, I'm like, well, okay, well, what, what would I want to do with it? Well, here's the thing with this image, Every time that I started trying to push it a little bit further, I would lose, um, I would lose my information in, you know, in, in these shadow areas, specifically. So I'm like, okay, well that was always a problem. I remember that being a problem when I was editing the first time. So let's, so let's take this mask, and I'm going to remove from the selection a luminance range, and I'm going to remove these dark ranges. So I'm just going to pick an area that's, um, that's darker. Okay, so now I'm left with everything but the dark ranges. 
And now I can go down here to my curves and I can start adjusting my curves knowing that I'm not going to affect the dark parts of the image. So I can do whatever I want to, you know, you can only push it so far because then it looks ugly. But I know that I'm going to be able to keep those dark areas without losing them into black. And so I can, you know, I can play with now those mid-tones and highlights minus, minus the, the, uh, the dark areas. And if I wanted, I could go even further and say, well, I don't want, I want to, um, I want to minimize the luminance range of the highlights as well. Actually, we can take the, the white here. Okay, so then my mask just becomes the mid-tone. So I'm, now I've selected out the mid-tones and I can play within those mid-tones to bring the image to where I want, knowing that I'm never, I'm, I'm not going to affect those bottom ranges. You know, I can, I can add contrast. I can bring the, the, the shadows down towards black without actually affect, like, the options that this opens up is huge. Like that little change right there just brings the image alive that much more. And you start, you know, you start where you say, okay, well, I'm gonna use another mask here and do a linear, linear gradient from the top. And I'm, I wanna, um, <clears throat> I wanna remove the dark areas. I want the luminance range. I wanna remove the dark areas of that up top zone and I can bring down the exposure there, and I can add a bit of localized contrast with my curves. And just with those little changes, I can adjust the curves of very, very specific selection. So basically Lightroom's taken their masking tool, which was already amazing, and just bumped it up to absolutely incredible. So. Uh, there'll be very little need to head into Photoshop to make these kinds of adjustments. Now, I, realistically, now all I'm using Photoshop for is for the really specific, specific and finicky stuff like um, a photo merging, blending things together, uh, specific, you know, pixel level re-editing and, and adjusting and t removing distractions and that kind of stuff because the, the healing tool in Photoshop is quite a bit better. But, um, you know, <laughs> we we have... I mean, just just to show you here, I could I could say, okay, I want to select the background, I want to uh, I want to eliminate the gradient. I want to invert that. So now I'm only working on that area. I'm going to take off the dark luminance range, and so now I've just got the midtones of the city, and I can. I can brighten it up, I can darken it down, I can add contrast to it, I can make a pop. All within that selection that I already have. It just makes things so smooth and easy. I mean, the options are truly endless. Bump up my whites a little bit there, and just with that little change right there. Uh, I mean, I was doing that live with you right here. It's it's uh, it's easy to see how powerful that is. So you get you get working on these things. I, I would say Lightroom has hit a home run with these adjustments. I'm so excited, and go get in there and make some better images.